Hello lovelies, in this video Mr B is going to be looking at the quotient rule for your A level maths. Now there are lots of examples in this video, worked through nice and slowly and the examples are at three different levels. You can use the timestamps down below to jump between those levels depending on how confident you feel on this topic. Take it nice and slow. There is no rush, there is no peer pressure from the person sitting next to you and no rush from the teacher at the front of the classroom. Pause the video, try and work out the answer and then play the video to check it. Once you finish doing all of these over on my website there are loads more questions just waiting for you. Look at differentiating, uh, starting off with algebraic fractions. And we can see there's two parts to the fraction. So firstly we have the numerator. So the numerator is 2x squared plus 7 and we can differentiate that. So we do 2 times 2 is 4 and reduce the power, we differentiate the whole number, then it goes away. Because again, you're reducing the power, there's no power to reduce, so it's going to go. Then we've got the denominator, which is 6x minus 8, and we can differentiate that, and it's going to leave us with just 6. To get it, we're multiplying the power by the coefficient in the front, that's 1 times 6. Of course, you don't see the 1 usually when it's power 1, when it's a whole number, you know, it's effectively going to be a power 0, because there's no x there. And so 8 times 0 gives you 0, there's nothing to write down. So we can differentiate the different parts separately, but how do we combine them together? And it's much like the product rule, when you're multiplying two bits together, and you can't really use straightforward differentiation like this, you've got to do a little bit extra. And it's the same for this. And it's something called the quotient rule. Now, the proper notation for the quotient rule is d over dx of u over v is equal to v multiplied by du by dx take away u multiplied by dv by dx now because we're not using v's i've just written a v there it's a bit too curvy it looks a bit too much like a u so let's make sure it's nice and pointy and then all of that is going to be divided by something i'm going to divide it by v squared. So that's the kind of official notation for this. Now just like the product rule I'm going to write this out in a little bit of a simpler way. So if you've got u over v then to differentiate it we're going to have v multiplied by u dash take away u multiplied by v dash. The dash signifying that's been differentiated all over v squared. And if we go back to the work at the start in blue, we can say, well, the numerator is u and the denominator is v. So the differentiated versions are u dash and v dash. So we've done the differential part of this already. All we need to do now to get our final answer is to substitute into the quotient rule. And uh, let's write the name of that down as well so we know the spelling. So firstly, we need v. So that's going to be 6x minus 8, and that's been multiplied by u dash, which is 4x. Taken away from that, we've got u, which is 2x squared plus 7. That's been multiplied by v dash, which is 6. And then all together, all of that is being divided by v squared. So v is 6x minus 8, and we are squaring it. So we've got an answer now, and the next steps are just all about kind of simplifying this answer as much as possible. So for example, expanding out the brackets. So we're going to have 6x times 4x is 24x squared. Negative 8 times 4 negative 32x. Then we're taking away, so we're going to be curved here because everything's going to end up being negative. So 2x squared times 6 is 12x squared, but we're taking this bit away, so it's a takeaway. Then we've got the 7 times 6. 7 times 6 is going to give us 42. Again, remember, we're taking all this part away, so that'll be negative. So we can collect like terms with the numerator here. So we've got 24x squared, take away 12x. Altogether, that'll be 12x squared. Then we've got the negative 32x and the negative 42. So that's how numerator dealt with. Now, what about the denominator? So you could leave it like this because the reason why we're expanding the numerator is that, you know, these two bits kind of are, are different and we need to combine them together into kind of one section. Whereas a 6x minus 8, it's already combined together. And if you multiply it out, we're just going to get a longer expression, you know, have an x squared term, an x term, a number term, like when you expand any quadratic. But we can't really simplify it any further on its own. So you could just leave it as 6x minus 8 squared. And then something you might want to try is you might want to try factorising the numerator and seeing if 6x minus 8 is a factor of the numerator. Because if it is, then you can cancel one of each out. 
and make the expression simpler. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to actually expand that quadratic for the denominator. So we're going to have 6x times 6x is 6x squared. 6x times negative 8 is negative 48x. Get two of those. In negative 8 multiplied by negative 8 is going to be a positive 64. And you can see that every single term here is even. And so what we could do is we could actually try and divide everything through by 2 to try and simplify it that way. Let's click the like terms first. So we've got 36x squared minus 96x plus 64. So simplifying the fraction, dividing through by 2, you know, we get 6x squared minus 16x minus 21. And the denominator, 18x squared minus 48x plus 32. So where you take this next is completely dependent on the question and what the question is asking you to do next. If it just wants this differentiated using the quotient rule, then you don't really need to be going into a lot of detail trying to uh, simplify everything. But if it's asking it for a particular form, or perhaps it's kind of laid in here some uh, same factors that you can take out, then you want to proceed further. So always explore it and try and see what you can do next. But for these questions, I'm going to leave it with the kind of initial combination of the numerator. I don't particularly think that expanding uh, the quadratic is actually making this simpler. It's making it shorter. So we'll just leave it like that. So moving on to the next example, we're going to take the numerator as u, 4x squared plus 6. I'm going to take the denominator as v, 4x cubed plus 5. It's important to note that with the product rule, u and v could be either way around. But with the quotient rule, the numerator and denominator have to be this way around. The numerator is always going to be u. So now we've identified that, we can find u dash and v dash. So 4 times 2 is 8 and reduce the power. 6 is going to go away. 4 times 3 is 12 and reduce the power. And the 5 is going to go away. We've done our differentiation. Now we substitute into the formula. So first we have v, 4x cubed plus 5. We're multiplying that by u dash, which is 8x. Then we're going to take away. We're going to take away u, which is 4x squared plus 6, and multiply that by v dash, which is 12x squared. You can divide all of that by v squared. v is 4x cubed plus 5. So all of that is going to be squared. So now we've got our answer. It's just a matter of simplifying it to an, an, an appropriate point. So let's expand the brackets. So 4x cubed multiplied by 8x. So 4 times 8 is going to give us 32. And x cubed multiplied by x will give us x to the power of 4. Multiply the 5 by 8x, we're going to get 40x. Moving on to the second set of brackets, 4x squared multiplied by 12 is going to give us 48. It's 12x squared, actually, so it's squared and squared will give us power 4 when they multiply together. We're taking away the second set of brackets, this has to be negative. Then we've got 6 multiplied by 12x squared, that's going to give us a 72x squared. And while that's positive, remember we're taking away the second set of brackets, so we need to make that negative instead. Now for the denominator, we're going to keep it as it is. Now so the last question, by expanding these brackets, we do some minor simplification. So for example, if everything's even, then expand the brackets, let's just simplify the fraction slightly. The real important thing we're looking for though in simplifying fractions is trying to get a kind of factor on the top and the bottom that we can cancel out. So if we could get 4x cubed plus 5 somewhere in the numerator, then we could cancel those out and get rid of one of those on the denominator. So really, we want to keep this factorised because we're looking out for 4x cubed plus 5 in our next step. So now we just need to collect like terms. And there's only one set, really. It's the, uh, the power 4. So we've got 32 and we've got negative 48 on the power 4s. And that will give us negative 16. So we can write negative 16x to the power of 4. Then we've got the x squared term. There's only one. Negative 72x squared. Then we've got the x terms. Only one of those. It's 40x. And again, that's all going to be over 4x cubed plus 5. And that's all squared. So from this point onwards, the only way to progress now is trying to factorise the numerator. and trying to get 4x cubed plus 5. Now, I don't know if that will factorise or not. But that's going to go into another topic. And that's going to involve likely some algebraic long division. So we're going to leave the question here for now. We're just going to focus on the actual quotient rule part of these questions. The next example, u would be 5x cubed plus 6. So u dash would be 5 times 3 is 15. 
reduce the power by one, and then we're going to get rid of the six. V would be the denominator, seven X squared plus one. So V dash seven times two would be 14, reduce the power, and then the one's going to go away as well. So I'll substitute into the quotient rule. So V is seven X squared plus one. And we're multiplying that by U dash, which is 15 X squared. Take away U, which is five X cubed plus six. And that's multiplied by V dash, which is 14 X. All of that has been divided by V squared. V is seven X squared plus one. So we need to square it. So again, we've got our answer. And now it's just about taking steps to simplify this to a reasonable degree. So the main thing you want to do is combine the double brackets on the numerator but the denominator as it is is going to be fine so we're going to do 7x squared multiplied by 15x squared and that's going to give us 105x to the power of 4 then we'll do 1 multiplied by 15x squared which would be 15x squared then we're going to do for our second brackets 5x cubed multiplied by 14x that would give us 70x to the power of 4 and we take away the second brackets so we need to change the sign then we've got 6 times 14x which would give us 84x and again, we're taking away, so we've got to flip the sign. And the denominator is fine as it is for now. So now we just need to collect like terms. So we've got 105x to the power of 4, take away 70x to the power of 4. That gives us 35x to the 4. Then look at the squared terms. We've only got one, so we can write that in. We've got no cube terms. And then the x term, we've got 84. And we don't have any kind of normal number terms. So now we simplify the numerator. We can have a look at the denominator. So this may well be the answer, but a, a possible next step would be seeing if we can factorize the numerator to get 7x squared plus 1 out as a factor and if you can then that means that you can cancel uh, one set of 7x squared plus 1 but again that's going to involve other topics so we're going to leave the question here for the next question u would be 3x plus 4 so v would be 8x minus 2 so we differentiate u dash is going to be 3 and v dash is going to be 8. So we do our substitution. So we want the v first. That would be 8x minus 2. And we're multiplying that by u dash, which is 3. Now we could write it in brackets like this. Um, you could even just, since it's a single thing, write it at the front, do something like this. Next we have u multiplied by v dash. We know that v dash is 8 and u is 3x plus 4. So you can see, you know, you can swap the places of the v and the u dash or the u and the v dash because they're being multiplied together. You can't do is, is flip them the other way around, for example. And all of that is going to be divided by v squared is 8x minus 2 squared. So let's expand the brackets. Looks a bit easier this time. So 3 times 8 is going to give us 24. So that'll be 24x. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 8 times 3 would be negative 24x. And then negative 8 times 4 is going to give us negative 32. And it's all over. 8x minus 2 squared. And now we can collect up the like terms. So 24x, take away 24x, is going to give us 0. So actually, we're only going to have a number term here. And the 6 and 32 is going to make 38 for us. So that'll be 38 over... 8x minus 2 squared. Now that was a negative 38. So, you know, you maybe you might want to put the negative on the numerator, but you can just take that negative and put it on the outside and make the whole thing negative, like so. And since the numerator is 38, we're not going to be able to take out, you know, um, 8x minus 2 as a factor. So there's going to be nothing else we can do after this point. The only thing you could potentially do is expand the quadratic for the denominator and then hope you're going to get all even numbers and, and start simplifying the fraction, maybe starting with divided by 2. Now, a last question like this, u is going to be 3x squared minus 9, and v is going to be 5x squared plus 2. So we can get u dash, 3 times 2 is 6, reduce the power, we're going to lose negative 9, and v dash, 5 times 2 is 10, reduce the power, and we're going to lose the 2. So now we can substitute. So v first, that's 5x squared plus 2. And we are multiplying that by u dash, which is 6x. We're taking away from that u, which is 3x squared minus 9. And multiplying it by v dash, which is 10x. All that's going to be divided by v squared. That's 5x squared plus 2 squared. And now we've got our answer.
So again, we'll just need to kind of expand brackets, try and combine things together and simplify this fraction. 5x squared times 6x will give us 30x cubed and 2 times 6x will give us 12x. 3x squared times 10x is going to give us 30x cubed and we take away the second lot of brackets, that'll be negative, flip the sign. Negative 9 times 10x is going to give us a negative 90x. But again, we've got to make this negative because we're taking away the second set of brackets. And if it's not already negative, then it's going to be a double negative, which will actually make it positive. Be very careful with that. It's a common mistake to not do that. That's all divided by 5x squared plus 2 squared. So now we can combine like terms again. And again, the 30x cubed, we're taking away a 30x cubed. So that term is going to go away. So we've got the 12x and the 90x. That's going to give us 102x. And that's going to be over our 5x squared plus 2 all squared. The next set of questions are going to use some trigonometry. So u is going to be equal to 7 cos 6x and v is going to equal 5x. So you need to remember that when you differentiate cos, you get negative sign, and then the angle doesn't change. What you do do, though, is you can take a coefficient on the angle out. So 7 times 6 is going to give us 42. So we have negative 42 sine of 6x. And then v dash will be nice and easy. It's just going to be 5. So now we can start our substitution. So v is 5x. u dash is negative 42 sine 6x and we're taking away from that u which is 7 cos 6x and multiplying that by v dash which is 5. All of that is being divided by v squared which is going to be 5x squared. So we can start to do our multiplications. Firstly we're doing 5 times 42 that's going to give us 210. So altogether it's going to be a negative 210 got the x term and we've got the sine 6x. Now there's only one term for each in this case. For the previous question we had two terms and so we'd end up with you know something to collect. But at this point we don't. We only have one term. So then our next one we've got 7 cos 6x multiplied by 5. So we take it away. 7 times 5 is 35. Then we don't have any x terms, but we've got the cos of 6x. So again, we don't have multiple terms here coming out of that set of brackets. So we don't have the step where we're collecting like terms here. Finally, for the denominator, we've only got a single term inside the bracket, so we, we could square it. So 5 squared is 25, and then we've got x squared. From this point onwards, there's a few ways we could simplify. So we can see that all the coefficients here can be divided through by 5. So negative 2, 10 divided by 5 would give negative 42, for example. So you could write negative 42x sine 6x, take away. So 35 divided by 5 would be 7, so it's 7 cos 6x. And then 25 divided by 5 is going to give 5x squared. Another thing I want to do is the negative 42 and the negative 7. They're both in the 7 times table, so you can take 7 out as a factor. So we take 7 out. Negative 42 divided by 7 is going to be negative 6 negative 6x, sine of 6x, take away, so then 7 cos, divide that by 7, you get 1 cos. So that'll just be cos of 6x. And then it would take something out as a factor in the numerator. The denominator needs to change, so we can leave that as 5x squared. Now, does that make this simpler? Uh, not necessarily. And again, it's going to depend on what the question is asking for. It might ask for the answer in a particular format, for example. Now, the last question was a cos question. This one is a sine question. So u is going to be 6 sine of 5x. So if we differentiate sine, we get cos. So 6 times 5 would be 30, would be 30 cos of 5x. Again, the angle doesn't change, even though we do take the 5 out. Then v is the denominator, which is 4x. So differentiate that, we'll get 4. So we substitute v is 4x. And we are going to multiply that by u dash, which is 30 cos of 5x. Then we're going to take away u, which is 6 sine 5x. Multiply that by v dash, which is 4. And it's all divided by v squared, which is going to be 4x all squared. Next step is expand the brackets. 4x times 30 cos. That's going to give us 120x 
because second set of brackets we've got six times four that'll be 24 and we've got the sine of 5x so again with this kind of question we're not getting multiple terms out we can't collect the terms up because you know cos and sine are, are different things then we've got 4x squared 4 squared 16 and x squared is x squared so again we've got our answer now and actually again a matter of how can we simplify this what methods can we use to simplify so i think we can take four out as a factor I think perhaps even 8 could come out as a factor of this. So let's do that. So 120 divided by 8 is 15. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And we, we could write 8 at the front like this, but then what's going to happen is we're going to be dividing it by 16, which has an 8 as part of it. 16 is going to be 8 times 2x squared. And so what's going to happen is we've got 8 divided by 8 practically in this. So we can get rid of the eights altogether. So just kind of use our simplifying fraction skills here. At this point, again, you could do things like we've got the 15 and the 3 on the numerator. You could take 3 out as a factor. Not necessarily going to get us uh, that far, but that's something you could do next. Again, I'm going to focus on the quotient rule here. So any next steps with kind of minor rearrangements will leave. Moving on to the next question, u is going to be 6 sine 8x, so v would be 2x cubed. That means that u dash is going to be 8 times 6, so it'll be 48. Ed sine will become cos, and the angle will stay the same. And for v dash, 2 times 3 is 6, and reduce the power by 1. So then we are going to substitute with v first, 2x cubed, and we're going to multiply that by u dash, which is 48 cos of 8x. Take away u which is 6 sine 8x, and multiply that by v dash, which is 6x squared. All divided by v squared. v is 2x cubed, and we're going to be squaring that. So again, time to expand the brackets. So the first off, we've got 48 times 2. That's going to give us 96. Look at x, we've only got one x term, x cubed. Then look at cos. Take away from that, we're going to have 6 times 6 is 36. There's no x terms, so then we're just going to have sine of the angle. Now, going back to that, there is an x term, actually, isn't there? It's 6x squared. So we've got to fit the x squared in. So let's put that before the sign. So we're just keeping things all in the same order. So we've got number term, we've got x terms, then we've got our trigonometry terms. And now for the denominator, 2 squared is 4, and x cubed to the power of 2, using laws of indices, that'll be x to the power of 6. Now, looking at that 4, I think all our coefficients can be divided through by 4, so let's do that. 96 divided by 4 is going to be 24, with the rest staying the same. 36 divided by 4 is 9, and 4x to the power of 6, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And then another thing we can do is maybe we can also look at the powers on the x, because this time, because we haven't with previous questions, this time there's an x term for each one of the three terms we can see here. So we can also use uh, kind of laws of indices to simplify those as well. So the way we're going to do this is the smallest one is x squared. So we can take a squared off each one, basically. So 24x cubed, the cubed is going to go down to a power 1. That's right, it's over here, the 24x. The x squared is going to go away because that's the lowest thing we're dividing through by. And then for the denominator, x to the power of 6 take away two from that it's going to be x to the power of four so we've done some simplification using kind of highest common factors with the numbers and then we're doing simplification with the indices as well for the next question this time the kind of numerator and denominator are the other way around from what we've seen them before so this time the trigonometry is on the denominator now we can't kind of switch between u and v so u has got to be the numerator it's got to be the 4x so u dash is going to be 4. The v has got to be the 3 sine 3x. Three so v dash, 3 times 3 is 9. So it'll be 9 cos 3x. So this is going to make for a different substitution here. So we're going to, again, start with v. So we have 3 sine 3x. Three and we're multiplying that by u dash, which is 4. Then I'm going to get u, which is 4x. And multiply that by v dash, which is 9 cos 3x. So you can see that even though in the question the trigonometry is now being put on the denominator, we still, after our substitution, end up trigonometry on the numerator. Then we're dividing by v squared. v is 3 sine 3x, so we're going to be squaring that. So we move on to expand the brackets. So we're going to be having uh, 3 times 4 for our first one. So that's going to give us 12 sine 3x. Take away 4 times 9 is going to give us 36. And we've got the x as well, so 36x, and then the cos 3x. And all of that is being divided by, so we're squaring 3 to get 9, and we're squaring the sine, which gives us sine squared. 
again, the angle pair of that's not going to change. So we're going to do a squaring sign, I'll put in a square sign and sign. We don't need to make 3x to 9x or anything like that. Now we can see that all three coefficients and all three terms are in the three times table. So we can divide through by three. So that'll give us four sine of 3x, take away 12x, cos 3x, and it's all divided by three sine squared 3x. Now for our last example with trigonometry, u is 6x and v is 5 cos 3x so u dash is going to be 6 and v dash is going to be 15 sine 3x we differentiate cos you get sine but it's a negative sine so we're going to make it a negative 15. then we do our substitution v is 5 cos 3x and we are multiplying that by u dash which is 6 taking away from that u which is 6x and that's being multiplied by v dash which is negative 15 sine of 3x all that's been divided by v squared. That's 5 cos 3x all squared. So multiply the brackets. We've got the 5 times 6 is 30. So no x terms. Then we can write the cos 3x. Then we've got the 6 times 15. That's a negative 6 times a negative 15. So that's going to give us a positive 90. We've got the x and then the sine of 3x. It's all been divided by 5 squared is 25. And cos squared is cos squared of 3x. So I can see that we can divide through this by 5. So 30 divided by 5 is 6. 90 divided by 5 is 18. And 25 divided by 5 is going to give us 5, with everything else remaining the same. For the next set of questions, we have some numbers with more difficult to differentiate. Again, we're using the quotient rule. So for this one, u is equal to 3 ln x to the power of 7. And v is equal to 5x to the power of 3. So v dash, 5 times 3 is 15, reduce the power by 1. For u dash, when you differentiate ln, you're going to get 1 over x. And you also take the power in the ln out. So it's going to be 3 times 7 is 21, and we're going to make it be over x. It's going to be 21 over x. So we substitute as usual. So we're going to have v first, which is 5x cubed, multiplied by u dash, which is a 21 over x. Now remember with this, we can write an over x as x to the minus 1, which is probably going to be easier for multiplying this out. So let's write 21x to the minus 1. What we don't want is a fraction within a fraction. Next, we have u, which is 3 ln x to the power 7. And then we have v dash, which is 15x squared. All of that is divided by v squared. So that's 5x cubed, all squared. So we multiply out the brackets. So we're going to have 5 times 21 first. That's going to be 105. Then we've got the x terms, so x to the power 3 and x to the power 1. If you multiply them, you add the powers, so that'll be x to the power of 2. So you see that kind of complicated negative 1 power is now gone. Then we're going to move on to the next set of brackets. We've got 3 times 15, which is 45. We've got our x term, x squared. And then we've got the ln x to the power of 7. That's divided by, we've got 5 squared, which is 25. And then we've got x to the power of 3 squared. So using the laws of indices, 3 times 2 is 6. And now we've got a few more things we can do. So we've got two steps. Firstly, we want to be um, simplifying the coefficients, and they're all on the 5 times table. So 105 divided by 5 is 21. 45 divided by 5 is going to give us 9, and 25 divided by 5 is going to give us 5. So that's our coefficients dealt with. Now, what about the rest? So we can also simplify the x squareds, because we're dividing by x to the power of 6. So if we kind of reduce everything by x to the power of 2, on the bottom, we're going to have x to the power of 4. And on the top, we're just going to have 21. And we're going to have the ln x to the power of 7. So the x terms have been cancelled out. All we need to do is move everything together, make it nice and neat. So it'll be 21 minus 9 ln x to the 7, all over 5x to the power of 4. The next question, u is going to be 6x squared in v is going to be 7 ln x to the power of 4. So it's the opposite way around of the previous question. This time, the kind of the ln, the natural log at the bottom. So you differentiate u, 6 times 2 is 12, reduce the power, differentiate v. So 7 times 4 is 28, and then ln is going to become 1 over x. So we're going to get this, 
28 over x, which is better written as 28x to minus 1 for substitution. So if you're over x, you can write it as a minus 1. That means we can now substitute. v is equal to 7 ln x to 4, and u dash is equal to 12x. u is equal to 6x squared, and v dash is equal to 28x to minus 1. That's all divided by v squared. V is 7 ln x to the 4. So all of that is going to be squared. Now, a little tip here. So you look ahead, we're doing 7 times 12. That might be okay, but then we're doing 6 times 28. And so we're going to get some quite large numbers that we can simplify later. A little tip is to simplify at the start. Now, I can see I've got 7 and 7. So maybe I can divide through by 7 early. So 7 divided by 7 is going to cancel out. So we need a 7 in the third term. Now we've got a 28 there. So we take the 7 out of 28, we've got 4 left. And so by simplifying early like this, we don't need to get some of those larger numbers. But again, if you're going to do this, it needs to be every single term that you can take that number out of. So all three terms out of 7 that we can take out. So now moving on to the easier multiplications, we're going to get 12x ln x to the 4. So just write everything together. There's nothing to multiply there. But for the next one, we do have uh, 6 times 4, which is going to give us 24. 24x squared. And it's not adding x squared because that's multiplied by x to the minus 1. So we're going to be adding those together. And that's going to give us just x. Now, for the denominator, it's slightly more complicated. Because remember, we took that 7 out. Well, this was actually squared. And what the squared means is that we've got the same thing multiplied by itself. And so when I took the 7 out, I can only take it out of one of the parts, not both parts. So that means in the denominator, we're actually going to be left with the, uh, the one of the 7s, but the other 7 is gone. Then we've got ln times ln, which will be ln squared. And then we've got the x to the power of 4, which is going to stay as it is. So you can see there's a few complications with that taking that 7 out early. There's a few things that could go wrong, a few common errors that you could do, like, you know, dividing through all the brackets by 7 rather than just one set of brackets in each term. So you might, again, it might be something you want to do last, just so you don't make any errors like that. But if you're confident, it's something you can look at to speed things up. Another thing you can do for further simplification is a, uh, the numerator tab. They've both got uh, 12, so we can take 12 out as a factor. Give us 12 lots of x, ln, x to the power of 4, take away 2x. And again, it's not always going to be what you want to do. So you're going to make a decision on, you know, which form of this is actually simpler for the purposes of the answer that you need. For the next question, u is going to be equal to 3x. So u dash will be 3. And v will be equal to 4 ln x to the power 6. So v dash with 4 times 6 is 24. You differentiate ln, you get over x. But as usual, it's easier to write this as 24x to the minus 1 when you're substituting. So it's easy to see kind of which laws of indices to use to combine terms together. So v is 4 ln x to the 6. u is, u dash is 3. So we don't even need a kind of set of brackets of 3 really. You can if you want to. u is 3x and v dash is going to be 24x to the minus 1. So you can put brackets around everything like we were doing before. Or for some things, if it's only kind of one kind of statement, you can, you want term, then you can just put it next to each other. Maybe just put one of them in brackets. But it's all divided by v squared. That's going to be 4 ln x to the power 6, all squared. So multiplying out, we've got 3 times 4 is 12. So that'll be 12 ln x to the power 6. 3 times 24 is going to give us 72. Then looking at the x statements, we've got x and we've got x to the minus 1. So we've effectively got x to the 1 plus x to the minus 1, and that gives x to 0. So the x terms are going to go away there. Then we're looking at what this is going to be over. We're going to do 4 squared is 16, and ln squared. And now it's pretty clear we can take 4 out as a factor. And actually, that's something we could have done on the previous step, like I showed on the last question. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. 72 divided by 4 is going to be 18. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. So our final answer is 3 ln x to the power 6. Take away 18, all divided by... 4 ln squared x to the power of 6. I guess actually on the numerator, we can divide that by 3 and take 3 out as a factor. So we can make it a little bit simpler again. So always keep your eye out for things like this. We're going to finish off with two examples using e. So u is going to be 3e to the power of 9x. And v 
to be equal to 7x squared. So u dash, 3 times 9 is going to give us 27. But remember, when you differentiate e, it stays the same. So you kind of got a line with a, a curve. When you differentiate it, the gradient is kind of the same as a line almost. v dash is easier. 7 times 2 is 14 and reduce the power by 1. So let's substitute. Start off with v. I'm multiplying it by u dash. Then we're taking away u and multiplying it by v dash. Then all of that is being divided by v, which is 7x squared, all squared. So now we can go through and try and expand the brackets and i think we get some quite large numbers here especially multiplying the 7 by 27 let's see if we can simplify first and before we do that it might be just useful to write the squared bit as two separate expressions so v squared that's going to be 7x squared multiplied by 7x squared so i think we can take 7 out of this so one from each term let's get rid of that 7 get rid of that 7 and then get rid of the 7 and the 14, which will leave 2, because 2 times 7 is 14. So that simplification should have helped us. Uh, we have another 7 at the bottom, and I don't think we can divide 3 by 7 again. So now doing our multiplications, that just leaves with just 27. There's nothing else there. And we've got the x squared, and we've got the e to the 9x. So we've got the number terms, then the x terms, then the e terms. Next one, we've got uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Then we've got x, and then we've got e to the 9x. That's being divided by, so we've got x squared multiplied by 7x squared, which will give us 7x to the power of 4. Now, we've got two lots of e, and they're both the kind of same kind of e, so let's take that out as a factor. So let's take out e to the line x, and that's going to be multiplied by 27x squared, take away 6x, and that's all divided by 7x to the power of 4. Now, the last bit of simplification you might want to do is that we've got x on the top of the bottom, so we can actually uh, divide through by one of the x's. We can get rid of one of the x's from each. So that's going to leave us with e to the 9x, OB bracket, 27x, take away 6, all over 7x cubed. So in that previous step, we just took 1x out of each of the three terms. For our last example, x and e are the other way around now. So u is going to be 2x squared, meaning that u dash is 4x, and v is going to be equal to 8e to the power of 8x. So v dash is going to be 64e to the power of 8x. We can move on with our substitutions. So we've got v first, 8e to the 8x, which is multiplied by u dash, which is 4x. Take away from that u, 2x squared, multiplied by v dash, which is 64e to the 8x. That's all divided by v squared. So that's 8e to the 8x, all squared. So we can start to expand our brackets. 8 times 4 is 32. And we've got the x. And then we've got e to the 8x. We are taking away from that. So 2 times 64 is going to give us 128. We've got the x squared, and we've got the e to the 8x again. Then for the denominator, so what I'm going to do here is, what I could do, you know, 8 squared 64, and then we've got e to the 8x, and we're going to square that. And so it might be easier to write this out as two brackets so you can see what's going on. So we're going to have 8 to the e 8x, multiplied by another 8 to the e 8x. And so you might find it's a bit kind of conceptually complicated to multiply an 8x by an 8x. But remember, when you kind of multiply in powers, laws of indices, you add them together. So it'd be a 16x. But do we want a 16x? Because all our other terms have an 8x in, and that means we can simplify and we can get rid of one from each term. That means our denominator is going to end up being uh, 8 times 8, which is going to be 64 e to the 8x. So we didn't need to bother going through the kind of 16x stage, which might have been a bit complicated. Now we've got a 64 at the bottom, so we can probably divide through by 32. So 32 divided by 32 is going to give us x. 128 divided by 32 is going to give us 4. So that'll be 4x squared. And then 64 divided by 32 is going to give us 2. So that'll be 2e to the 8x. Now that's a good final answer. You can do one other thing, you put it all on one line. And the way you put it on all one line is, we're going to have the x minus 4x squared in a bracket, and then the denominator can come up to be a numerator. Just when something becomes a numerator, you're going to do something. You've got to make it 
be kind of negative powers and it's kind of like one over the numbers. So two is going to become one over two and e to the eight x is going to become e to the negative eight x. So that's just another way of writing it if for whatever reason you want it all in one line.